I, I'm totally uh, clueless on this target. <laughs> I have no. We, I we is this somebody are. we should know? Uh, I got some uh, weird stuff. I'll explain it all. It's easier if okay. we go for it. All right. Well, well let, let's let's get in. Got some it. slides as feedback because some of you might not know the background to this. It is a bit wordy. Um, it's probably about eight or nine slides. Just bear with me. I'll read for it because it's also good for the subscribers, you know, to know the the history of this. Because all right, because you know they need to know a little bit about it. The oh shit um, moment approaches. Here it is. But I'm I'm sure that once you see what it is, you'll all be frantically looking for your RV sessions on on screen anyway, and you won't be listening to what I'm talking <laughs> about feedback wise. It's Tom Hanks. So I'm going to share the screen. So this target came about from a discussion uh, with myself and uh, researcher Richard Dolan about Ingo Swan and the elusive axle rod. Uh, and this was several wow. months back. After Richard had worked with us on our Bob Lazar project, I approached him and asked him if he had any RV targets he'd like us to look at uh, and provide good data and answer. His response was to see if we could shed some light that may lead us in the direction of Mr. Axelrod, which is the project at hand. For those of you oh. who don't know, this is the cue for it. Uh, so it's target 01121975. And the target was the real person known as Axelrod from Ingo, Ingo Swan's experiences from the era, era at the penetration book, 1975 onwards. In early... February 1975 is where this truly strange story begins with a phone call from a highly placed functionary in Washington, D.C. He told Swan that he would get contacted by a Mr. Axelrod and urged Swan to help if he could and to ask no questions. About four weeks later, Axelrod called and to cut the story short, Swan agreed to meet him and he gets picked up by two military looking guys gets frisked, and whilst wearing a black hood, is taken to an underground facility. There he meets Axelrod, who, needless to say, acknowledges that his name is just a pseudonym. He's an employee for an agency that exists without leaving a paper trail regarding our mission. And that's what he said. Uh, it turns out that Axelrod wants Swan to view the dark side of the moon, and Swan was well paid uh, $1,000 uh, a day to do this, and he agreed to not reveal anything about the project for at least 10 years. Uh, here are a couple of sketches Ingo did when he actually did that for the, at that underground facility. So, so here's some of the sketches of, you know, some of the things he came to have seen on the moon itself in his RV session. So Ingo remote views the moon and sees evidence of alien bases, including structures emitting light and industrial activity. Later in the book, Axelrod and the two military-like types take Swan to a lake somewhere in the north. Ingu kind of thinks that this might have been in Alaska. Uh, and they took him there to observe a UFO. And from the book, the reader gets the impression that it arrives there at certain times to get water. Uh, rather than just observing the UFO, they all have to flee when the UFO appears to start killing off animals within the vicinity. Now, when I asked Ingo face to face about the book in 2011 and its claims, he was adamant that it all happened and it was all true. I've also interviewed several of Ingo's closest friends and associates, and they all say Ingo did not lie. And they, too, believe it's a true account that he experienced. And also Ingo's Axel Rock character was also mentioned in the, in the notorious Eric Walker Davis Wilson notes leak. This happened a few years ago. And these leaked notes from the Admiral Wilson uh, meeting was discussing black bu budget special access programs studying alien technology. And they mentioned, you know, Ingo and Mr. Axelrod in those notes as well. So that's pretty much it on, on feedback. We don't know who Axelrod was. We do have a feeling that he was some kind of military kind of special access program type person. And many people within the industry uh, have been trying to kind of piece together all these years uh, who the kind of person might have been and who he kind of might have been working for. And that's where you guys come in, really. Uh, we want to, the thoughts behind mine and Richard's conversations were to try to get a few leads that might lead us, you know, in in the right direction uh, or to to look against a list of names that we've already gathered of potential people. Wow. This is cool. So I was expecting a little bit of... Uh, ufo date in there but you know just as i did say uh, describe some of the events that happened and you know axel rod and ingo were 
Uh, and essentially in the book, for those of you who haven't read it, you know, in, uh, they took Ingo to, uh, he claims it was in Alaska. He That's that's by his best judgment where he thought it had happened. And they took him all the way up to this mountain area out in the middle of nowhere. And it was all secret and they had to be really quiet. Him, Axel Rod and the two, uh, the two twins, the military type uh, people that were there, you know, supporting them. Um, and whilst there, they saw a UFO uh, materialize out of nowhere, grow really big, hovering over a lake. Um, and then I think one of them may have made a noise or something, and the UFO or whatever the object it was recognized that there was someone there in the area, and it started sweeping the area with some kind of lasery type weapon, which caused them then to have to vacate super fast and run run downhill. So there is, you know, there is a joint UFO experience that Axelrod and Ingo definitely definitely had, which I think came out in quite a lot of the RV data. But I was trying to push you as well to get as much data primarily about Axelrod as the person. And I think some of you did some great sketches of, of Ingo as well in with your RV sessions. Well, let's me. get into it. So, yeah, it's a case of who <laughs> wants to, to go first, really. You, all of you did several our sessions. Uh, you know, I sent I sent you guys back, some of you, two or three times because I was really, you know, trying to hone in on... I could see you were getting data and some of you were picking up Ingo because, you know, he's, he's a very strong character. You can't not pick up on him. Um, and I was trying to direct some of you a bit more to know. I need to know a bit more about the secondary person here as well. That he's the he's the primary focus guy. Um, but you know, I think you did. I haven't done an analysis of it all, but you know, from what I saw as it came in, I think you got some very good pieces of data that Richard and myself and maybe other people could um, to use and investigate. And I have to be honest, some of the some of the sketches and some of the data do lead me to think certain people that I thought might be Axelrod already might uh, yeah, might have a bit more credibility behind them. Who wants to go first? I'll do it. You go for it. Got some pretty interesting things. So the first person I saw was this guy. Um, has something pre-planned and he's trying to figure it out. He's precautious. He's a person of interest. I get the sense that he's hidden. Or, or he's in a hideout. Uh, he's incognito. He has an agenda. Some manipulation tactics. He's got deep pockets. He's got a plot and a plan. Had like a CEO type feel. Like he's in charge. He holds the reins. Oversight. Some anxiety. Some regret. Okay, so looking at the life, it's like a person uh, in the bushes being sneaky in a restricted, secure location. And it feels like a sighting. There's like something bright in the distance, a bright light off in the distance. Uh, they're panicking. They can't believe it. They're kind of like flabbergasted. And the sense is like almost like spying, observing, watching. Um, I wrote like something out of a movie. And it, it felt like very show and tell, hidden scientific technology. So that you know, that sounds like that could have been them seeing that uh, that event there, and then started getting a little woo woo here. Um, I even wrote, I wrote, I I don't know if this is on target, but I saw like a, you know, a UFO touching down in the area, kind of like causing all the any vegetation in the area to kind of like get brushed off to the side, and like a bright patch of white light underneath it. Well, some work. Yeah, you know, I kind of do the same guy. Who would like to go next? Then I'll go. Go for it. Because show, uh, show that last sketch again. Name that was a good session name. Okay, okay, and then I'll show you my guy. Kind of close. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go back to the beginning. Then two guys, this person learned from a mentor, teacher, instructor, past knowledge, wisdom, instructions on how to act. He was selected to receive this and then ascended to a leadership role. There is something devious here, mysterious, hidden, not as it seems. So I think that's Axelrod at the top and that's Ingo at the bottom. Someone is not what they seem. He has a mask or altered appearance, a body double or disguise, layers cloaked, a different identity. This is a person with his eyes closed, contemplating like meditating or remote viewing, focused, calm, secretive. 
He won't tell the truth, withholds information. Man that's middle-aged, strong will. He has secrets. He establishes control. So in that one session, there's lots of good hints that I think we could look at towards an yeah. identity, you know, because there's lots of spy craft in there. There's military mm -hmm. references, military uniforms. Yeah. Location details as well. That's definitely worth a look at. Yeah. Great session. Dick. Pages. Holy smokes. Yeah, that was great. Oh, that was really good. So far, so good. Between Yeah. yeah. Oh. I, well, I'll show you on Google Earth, maybe not in public where that backyard was where they had the secret meeting because i saw it and i looked i looked up the name of the road and i i on google earth i go well, that's what i was that's what i saw you're like it is a tailor shop <laughs> <laughs> they sell yeah. suits there <laughs> yeah yeah well, they but but if you say the secret word you get in the back and you meet the the real guy yeah that was the visual that I got. Mid Middle-aged male subject, working, smiling, engaged with others, enjoys the people, the crowds, lots of smiles and laughing. A very social person, uh, personable and well-received, but he has a very serious side, stern to the point and difficult to argue with. Good stuff. I like the bit at the end. That, the impression is reminding me a bit, quite a bit of Ingo himself in that one. He was, he was very much like that. The notion is someone gets taken advantage of, possibly even goes missing. But missing? What the hell is that all about? The individual in question seems to be missing, either taken or in hiding. Well, which is it? Are they taken or are they in hiding? I wonder. I can see this person being taken away, but I wanted to know where. And they arrive here at this location. It's nighttime. And I'm having to wonder, is this person alive? What, what do we got here? They, is that uh, like an ice box? They got their dead body in there? Or they just... So I'm wondering what is this kind of... Uh, this place is, looks interesting. But what's the place, though, I wondered? And it felt like uh, it had an industrial feel. And I'm, is this like a military base or something like that? I didn't know. There was a helicopter in the air and buildings, complex building, uh, complex of buildings, areas seemed dry. I don't know, it, Edward. I'll give you. I'll give you some feedback on your data about the guy going missing. Yeah, in the early in the mid nineteen seventies, my brother in law Michael Bowen was a famous psychedelic artist. He was a contemporary of Ingo Swan. He was he made a living doing psychedelic art and sold to big name people like James Coburn and others. And he knew Ingo Swan, and I remember we were talking about psychic and, and Michael bone was heavy into LSD. I'm sure that he was doing LSD with Ingo, but he hung out with Ingo Swan and he, and I, I had never heard of anybody named Ingo. I'd never heard of Ingo, but I remember him saying the government is doing psychic spying. And he said, my friend Ingo disappeared. Nobody knows where he is. He was, he was very psychic, and I swear to God, the government scooped him up because he's gone. He's working for the government doing psychic spying, but he used the word, Ingo is missing. So the people in the art scene weren't told what happened is Ingo just disappeared from the art scene one for a period of time. So your your session is ex exactly spells out what happened to Ingo Swan, Edward. Interesting. That's yeah, yeah. That was stuff. that was the talk, and I remember like I remember the Ingo because I'd never heard of anybody named Ingo, but yeah, Ingo the psychic artist disappeared, and I heard that story in mid seventies. Okay, well, so far this has been one of the most interesting remote viewing debriefs ever. We, how many more? Oh, yeah, how many more sessions we got? Did you do one, Sean? Sean yeah. did one as well. Yeah, me and Dennis both. I yeah, think. Yeah. All right, well, we got two more to go. Go ahead, Sean. You want, go next? Or you want me to? It's up to you, sir. I got a yeah, bearded male, thirty-five to forty-five. That's that's a mullet, dude. That's a serious <laughs> mullet. <laughs> yeah, I guess that would have been the thing back then. So here's the diary. Target feels like a male around forty years old. I see him bearded with a long dark hair, but very well kept. He's got a a look like he can see deep into you if he looks at you. Writing is very important to him, and he and it's a part of his mission, which he wrote a lot of books. It's like he's passing down ancient secrets or sacred wisdom. 
and what he has to write uh, seems to be channeled to him or is he, he is being divinely guided by non-physical helpers. There's also seeming to be a coded or more than what he is writing literally. So I was just getting that he'll write things down literally. So there's a message, but there's a code buried in it. So I, that's kind of weird. I don't know why I was getting that. Hidden message or meaning meant for a secret few with additional knowledge. Uh, he feels very calm, calm, quiet, wise, and determined. So three men meeting together to discuss important uh, matters. Strategy, accomplish a plan together. It's about uh, spreading a message, but in a way that will win hearts and minds while evading authority that would be likely to quash their efforts. They have to stay below the radar, but they don't use that term. So, Sean, you kept getting that imagery of the human form with the halo and the radiating lines. Yeah. Look at Ingo's, some of his famous artwork, look at that top one. Look at that. Yeah. That, that you, awesome. Yeah, you drew that on the wall. So. And there's the pyramid, too. Yeah. Kind of reminds Thanks. me of, uh, he talks about the Ascended Masters. Oh, he In one of his books, he said he was doing research and getting involved in that kind of thing. That kind of reminded me of that, too. Yeah. And uh, with the pyramid stuff, because that came up in a couple of your guys' sessions, in my last uh, issue of eight martinis that i put out in the magazine uh it was the uh it was never seen before remote viewing sessions done actually at the pyramids that ingo did when he did pyramid yeah. project looking at communication it was poised in a deeper voice guttural quiet and intentional there was a restriction or limits a great communicator but doesn't say much it was tactical and strategic was he careful with his words there's an aspect that feels reckless or inflammatory it triggers anxiety in his gut. Did I say too much, he's asking. Confident, protected, guarded, secrets, hiding something. Emotional, but masking. He was tall and physically fit, had a muscular chest and abdomen, maybe stomach pain. He sweats, he was calm, but he had training, body and mental training. Resistance techniques can endure pain, stress, and hardship. He spent a lot of time in his own head and was starting to impact him physically. Strong, but disconnected. Again, awesome data in there. Lots... Lots of uh, interesting points that I think, you know, uh, myself uh, and Richard and maybe some other people will be able to focus upon and, and yeah. see where they where they go to. Lots of, you know, elements that you guys have that overlap as well. Yeah. But great data, guys. Really, I hope you really enjoyed it. It's a, it's a, it's a mystery. It's a modern mystery, but it's one that's um, of the times, you know, it's really relevant for what's happening out there with the disclosure program that's going on with the whistleblowers right now. Definitely the most interesting target we have had in a long time. Yeah. Really yeah. fascinating target. Wow. Yeah. Awesome work, guys. Lots to ponder upon. For sure. Thank you. Yeah. That was Good fun. one. Good one. Great target. Definitely, Great yeah. target, man. Nice work, guys.